Hi, and welcome to our Two Rivers Festival for 2021. This is uh, the DIY water filtration project. And this event is part of the 10th annual Two Rivers Festival that celebrates and appreciates the speed in Aramasa rivers. Our hearty thanks to Anita Liu and Corey um, for sharing their passion for our rivers with you. And thanks to you for attending this event. The festival is organized and run by volunteers and involves many community organizations. Please support these organizations that are doing good work in our community. Please also support our advertisers and our event sponsors, CFRU, Mike Schreiner and Mickey Shepherd, who made this event possible. You can see all our advertisers on our website. We have over 40 great events, so please have a look and RSVP to the ones that are of interest. This festival is a project of Wellington Water Watchers. It is our hope that if we fall in love with our rivers, we will want to further protect them. We will be recording these events to share. And if you do not feel comfortable with that, please know that you can turn off your video. Now I'll introduce Corey and Anita. Corey is a first year student studying environmental science. Upon finishing her degree, she hopes to work in a field involving aquatic systems and plant health. One of her favorite hobbies is biking through parks and painting whatever beautiful nature she sees. Anita is a PhD student studying cancer biology and Let's Talk Science Coordinator at the University of Guelph. Aside from research and science outreach, Anita also enjoys baking and yoga. She is looking forward to traveling once COVID is over. Okay, and I'll turn it over to you now, Anita. Awesome, perfect. Thanks for introducing us and thank you for um, inviting us to take part in the Two Rivers Festival. So today we just have a little mini workshop on water filtration and how to make a water filtration unit. So I'm just gonna share my slides here. I think you can see them, <laughs> I hope you can. All right, so Corey, I'm gonna pass it over to you and we'll do a brief intro before we get into our actual um, workshop. Awesome, so yeah. Uh, yeah, so water obviously is such an important resource that we use in our everyday lives. We use it in basically everything like cooking, bathing, uh, drinking. Water is super important for our health and it's also important for the health of marine life. And we're very fortunate to be able to have clean drinking water in our homes. But what happens when the water gets polluted? So you guys think this water can be cleaned and how so? So normally we would ask people to type in the chat if they are comfortable with answering. And I don't know if anybody has any ideas of how we can clean the sturdy water. Um, but if you have any ideas and want to share, feel free to use the chat. And I think it's functional, so we can monitor that. And if not, I can start by throwing out some ideas. <laughs> All right. We have one person in the chat that said boiling, which is what I was gonna say. So boiling, I think would be a great way to clean the water. Um, any other ideas? I know people like to use Brita filters or other type of filters. So I'm assuming filtering is a way we can also clean the water. All right, I think that covers the top two ideas, I guess, that we had. All right, Corey, I'll advance the next slide if that's okay to move forward. Yeah, awesome. So uh, there are several different steps we can take to clean water. So uh, this whole process is basically a really large uh, filtration process with many steps. So the first one here is coagulation. And coagulation is when chemicals are added to the water and mixed 
uh, really, really fast. So then the coagulation causes any fine particles in the water to stick together. Uh, so the clumps are larger and easier uh, to, uh, to dispose of. And those clumps of particles are called flock. So then in the next step, it's called sedimentation. And in this section, the flock settles to the bottom of the, uh, of the machine uh, because of gravity where it can be removed. So then the next step is filtration. So the water gets filtered using different materials with different sizes. So it removes those uh, larger clumps and also the smaller clumps that are left over. Um, and then the next step is disinfection. Uh, so some microorganisms like bacteria and viruses, they're very, very small, so they can pass through the, all the previous steps. So using chemicals like chlorine or UV light are super helpful to kill them. So the water is a lot safer for us to drink. All right, perfect. Actually, I think I see someone right in the chat. Does boiling actually clean it? So does boiling actually clean water? So that's a good question, which we'll kind of get to um, during the, the workshop, but it depends on <laughs> yes and no in a way, because it depends on what's in the water. Um, if there's physical items in it, then it probably wouldn't, but it would probably kill some of the bacteria and viruses that are in water. All right, so thanks, Corey. Um, so today we're going to make a filter together using some at-home materials, and that it's the step that really happens, oops, sorry, right here, right before disinfection. So that uses kind of materials that we can even have at home or we can find in nature. So this was a list of the materials that you would need to take part in this workshop or to make the filtration unit. It's okay if you don't have um, all of the materials. I believe everything is on that website that has a graphic on how to make the filtration unit if you didn't have the materials and want to do it at a later date. So I have all the materials here so we can walk through the actual making of the filter unit together. So I'm going to stop sharing my screen for one moment and just get everything set up. Just out of curiosity, does Anne have the materials or does anybody have the materials to make these things at home? You can type in the chat, yes or no. And again, I'm going to go through it so it's not a problem if you don't have it. It'll just let me know how fast or slow I need to go. Okay, so no, perfect. Thank you for responding. Okay, so that's okay. We can work on it together. I'll be the hands of this operation. <laughs> you can just kind of follow along mentally or and just see how I do it. So what you basically need is something to act as your actual filter. So this is just a bottle of water, sorry, a bottle, plastic bottle that I cut in half um, into its top and bottom portions. I just picked this out of my recycling bin. I didn't go out and buy something. You don't need to go out and buy a plastic water bottle or a plastic bottle to do this. If you have a funnel at home, that will work perfectly fine because it's the same thing as using this, right? And then instead of using the bottom, you can just use a glass jar or any sort of you can even use a bowl if you want as a vessel. So it just sits on top to act as your water catcher. So I'm gonna use this just because it's a bit bigger and you can actually see through it while this is kind of small, you can't really see very much. So the top portion of your water bottle or plastic bottle, excuse me, or your funnel is going to act as the actual filter. And this bottom part is gonna catch all of the water you filter. So what you're gonna do um, is put coffee filters around the mouthpiece of the filter. So I have three coffee filters here. There's different things you can try with your water filtration unit to see how well it filters. So if you want, you can try two, you can try one, you can try six. Um, it doesn't really matter, but the thing to note is that the more layers you add, the slower your filter is going to go and probably the cleaner the water at the end, right? Because of all the layers that water is going to have to travel through. So I'm just going to wrap this around the mouthpiece of my bottle and use an elastic band and tie this off. It's hard to do <laughs> when it's facing the other way. All right, so I have my mouthpiece covered with my coffee filter like this. I'm just going to put that on tighter. All right, so that's the bottom. 
And then what I'm going to do next is add some cotton. So I don't actually have cotton balls at my house. I only have cotton rounds like makeup remover pads. So this, if you have these, this would work. Cotton balls would work. Gauze would even work. Um, so I'm just going to separate them and then put them in the bottom and cover them out with these. So it's going to look like that. All right. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is add some sand. And we're going to build from the bottom up. So my coffee filter is there, my cotton balls there, and I'm going to add some grains of sand. This is sand that we got from the dollar store because we had it in our Let's Talk Science office. But if you have any, if you're going to the beach and you were able to catch some sand, you can grab some from there. Or if there's anything in your local playground, I'm sure you can take some from there as well. So I'm just going to sprinkle some sand on top. Oh no. You might want to put something on your table so it doesn't get too messy. <laughs> All right. So there's the sand in there. Hopefully you can see that. And then we're going to add some gravel next. So again, these are just craft supplies that we had um, in our office. So you can grab gravel from the craft store or just, again, from your anything you can find outside. If you find anything outside, it's important to wash your hands after. <laughs> you don't know what's touched it. All right, so gravel. As you can see, I'm not really measuring. I'm just kind of just throwing it all in. And then last but not least, just some rocks. Um, Again, anything that you find is perfectly fine. So just some rocks on top. So here's the layers of our filter. You can hopefully see there. All right, so now we can do, all we have to do is test our filter and see how it works. So what I would suggest you do is put a cloth down <laughs> or put it over a plate or a baking tray or something because it can kind of get messy. So here's our filter unit. It's all assembled. I don't know if you can see this. Hopefully you can. Here, perfect. So we're doing this live. All right, so here is just some water with dirt. I grabbed some dirt from my backyard and I actually have a rain barrel outside my house. So I just put rainwater in it um, just to save water. And my yeast troughs are probably the cleanest. So there's probably even more dirt in here. So I did this this morning. So that's why the dirt's starting to settle. Oh, perfect. And you can see it fine. Perfect. Thank you. So I'm just going to give this a quick stir and make sure nothing settled. And then, get that spoon out. And then what you're going to do is carefully pour the water into your water filtration unit. So if you want, um, if you end up doing this at home, what you can do is you can time how long it takes the water from, to travel from the top to the bottom. And that gives you the filtration rate. So how long it took the filter to filter your water. Um, and depending on how big your filter is, how dirty your water is, how, how many materials your filter has, it's going to take shorter or longer period of time. So that'd be, that could be a good you know, science experiment that you can do and you can measure and change the components of your filter to see how fast or slow it goes. But I mean, someone wants to time it, they can go ahead. But if not, I'm just going to pour this straight in. So just be careful when you pour that you don't spill. So what we're gonna do is just pour this water on top. I'll just go right to the top. Oh gosh, okay. All right, luckily no spills. All right, I don't know if you can see this. I think you can. And now we're just gonna watch it slowly drip to the bottom. Um, this might take a little while for it to go through. But I have a video that I did it and I had to spill. Uh, speed it up but I don't know can you see it dripping uh yes I can see it okay yeah so slowly going through the filter okay Anne says yes I can try to it's not really in frame which is a problem I guess my background doesn't help either because <laughs> you're seeing me I I can see it quite clearly okay good <laughs> all right so we're just gonna let the water slowly passed. It's actually going pretty fast. This is faster than my first one went. A 
forgot to mention that if you grab, yeah, if you grab anything from outside, make sure you wash your hands, especially if you're digging around in soil because you can even hear it. I don't know if you guys can hear it over the Zoom call. Quite a difference in the color. I know. It's pretty good. Not bad. <laughs> Not bad for some simple materials. Yeah. I was partly interested in this because um, I do canoe tripping. And uh, so when you do that, you have to get your water from the lake or yeah. the river that you're on. And um, although, I mean, I go up north and the water's pretty clean. We go out sort of a little distance into the lake and, and collect the water from there. So it's pretty clean, but, uh, and then we, we treat it right. usually or boil it or something. But I thought this is another really interesting, good process to know about. Yeah. I, I know people that go camping and they just drink again, like, like water, stream water. And there's, I think at camping stores, they sell like tablets or something you yeah. can put in something like that. I haven't tried that before. Um, and just had a question, a bigger filter bottle, would it help speed up the process with the water pressure? A bigger filter bottle? Um, maybe, I think it has to do more with the layers and I'll explain that in a moment. Um, just because it takes longer for the water just to make it through all the layers, right? Of your filter unit, if you have more sand, more gravel and more rocks. Um, I think it's done. I don't know if anything else is going through. All right, so this was the before. I gotta stir it again because it already settled. All right, this was the before and this was the after, which is not that bad. Wow, that's really good. That's pretty good. So it's still, a little yellow. It's not this, but it's still a little yellow. Um, but it's important that even if it looks clean, you shouldn't drink it just because we haven't disinfected it, right? So we got rid of the larger impurities like the soil, um, the grains of soil or anything else in the soil really. There's probably a bunch of other gunk in here, but we haven't got rid of all the microorganisms because they're so tiny. So in order for us to do that, we'd probably have to chemically treat it. We could boil it. I probably wouldn't boil it and drink it still. <laughs> um, I'm with the blue community and concerned about communities without drinkable water. How might you disinfect? That's a good question. And I don't know if I have the answer to that. Does anybody have any ideas? Um, I think most people do boil it. And I, my understanding is if you boil it for two minutes, you kill practically everything. I think you can kill any living organism if yeah. you boil it for two minutes. Yeah, I would say maybe boil it first or yeah, if you wanted to chemically treat it as well, that would probably help. Okay, so that's kind of how you make a DIY water filtration unit at home if you want. Again, you can always play with the layers of your actual unit. And just to explain, I guess, the science behind it, or let's, let's see if anybody has any ideas why this worked the way it did. So does anybody have any ideas why soil, gravel and rocks were able to clean our water kind of well, <laughs> relatively well. Any thoughts? Well, you're, you're, you're putting layers underneath the particles that particles are bigger than, so they can't get through it. Exactly, yeah. So one way I could kind of show this well without hopefully getting my laptop wet is just looking at the filtration units. This is why I like using a plastic bottle sometimes because you can see it. But you can kind of see all the, maybe if I go like this, you can see it better. You can kind of see all the layers of our filter unit right here. And hopefully you can see all the dirt that got trapped in all the layers here, right? So you have all your, your rocks, your gravel, your sand, and here's a cotton down at the very end here. Mm -hmm. And you can even see all the soil that just got stuck in all these little layers. 
right? So what we basically did was put our, our water through what's called a permeable substrate. So when we put all these things together and stack them on top of another and put soil, water, like dirty water through it, all those little rocks, grains, and sand came together and they had little tiny holes in between all of them. And in all the holes, when we put the dirty water through, all the soil got trapped in all these little crevices and all these little spaces, which is why you see all this dirt stuck in between. So what it did is essentially just made this physical barrier where all the soil could get stuck in those in those holes and the water just passed right through. If you use, if one uses speaker view on Zoom, it is easier to see the layers. Oh, okay, so if people can see that, just go to speaker view and hopefully my face will be a bit bigger and you can see it there. So that's kind of what, what we did here. We just made physical kind of layers between the two, the different, um, items in our filtration unit and it got all the soil got trapped. So that's why maybe if you use bigger layers, right, if each one was a bit bigger, your water would take longer to pass through because it has to trickle through all those layers and our water potentially would be cleaner because it has more pores and more gaps for that soil to get stuck in while the water just passes right through. So that's kind of the science behind it. And if we wanted to, we could add maybe activated carbon. I don't know if anybody's heard of that, but that's a way to chemically kind of remove some of the other impurities that could happen, that could be in our water as well. So that's the DIY portion of our filter unit um, uh, workshop. I don't know if anybody has any questions, but we just had some quick wrap-up questions and to think about if you end up making this. So I guess I don't need to share my slides, but what do you think would happen if we flipped the order of our filtration unit? So instead of putting bigger rocks first, then gravel, then sand, what would happen if we flipped it? Do you think it would still work as well or would it not? Anybody have any ideas? <laughs> well, I would think most, most of the stuff wouldn't get through the cotton uh, pads that you've got there down to the other layers. Yep. But other than that, I don't know. Yeah, so that's what I would think as well, because the sand would fall through the rocks and the gravel. Yeah, I feel like it, we went from bigger to smaller, right? The bigger rocks on top then the gravel then the sand. And I think it, if, even if you look at the top, hopefully you can see this, um, all the big chunks are on the top. And if, if we flipped it, I feel like it would it wouldn't pass through, like it just wouldn't flow as well at all. Yeah. It would just get trapped. All right, I don't know if I have any other wrap up questions or any other ideas. Um, yeah, other things were just, do you think we could add anything to this to make it filter better? Um, if there's any other components you can think of that could work. I think we said boiling it after, we can disinfect it after. Or sorry, yeah, with chemicals. Is there anything other, other thing we can add to make it work even better? Looks like it worked quite well for, you know, what we were doing with it. Yeah. yeah. Maybe we can try adding more water and see what happens. <laughs> I wonder if it works well the second time around. Did you do it? This is already stuck Good in point. it. I'm gonna try it one more time. I don't know if you can see this. Here, I'll back this up a little bit more. So we were doing this on watching this through a camera. Let's see what happens. Hopefully it's not too clogged. I was trying to do something else with it last time and I I had to dump it out and start over because it doesn't really work well if you want to change anything after everything's just wet and full of full of soil. I guess I should dump the water out first, but well, it's working. Yeah, it's definitely dripping through. The coffee filter is definitely soaked right through. <laughs> so I guess I could have replaced that as well. Oh, thanks, Anne. Thanks for coming. <laughs> well, at least it's recorded. We know that. So hopefully someone else can watch this and we have our other three minute clip to share. 
hopefully you can try this at home and let us know how it goes if you do. I'd be curious to see what components you put in this and and if you got the same results that we did. Maybe you can get cleaner water than we did too. Well, that's great. Thank you very much, Anita and Corey. This has been very, very interesting. And um, I'm sure that we'll have a lot of interest once it's on YouTube. Mm -hmm. And uh, maybe it'll go viral. <laughs> I don't know about that, but <laughs> we can see. This will be the new internet sensation, maybe. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> All okay, right. well, thanks very much. Yeah, if there's no other further questions, then we can end it here. Just a All short right. little workshop, a little bit of science on a Saturday. <laughs> yep. Okay, right. take care. Bye. Thanks. Bye bye.